All right, uh, let's. This is the one, mighty wind that's gonna take you over the edge, bro. So you might uh, want to sm- smoke three cigarettes at once uh, if you need to. Uh, but um, Simon Jordan goes in we are not on gonna. Newcastle's uh, transfer strategy this summer and criticizes criticizes failed Gehi pursuit. Let's take a listen to their pundits and, of course, Jim White is, of course, there. Newcastle United in the transfer window with Tesco Mobile for business. Simon, when you look at it, is there a bit of buck passing uh, underway at Newcastle? The reason I ask, Newcastle Sporting Director Paul Mitchell, uh, not long at the football club, Mitch, as he's known in the football world. I, I've known Paul Mitchell since his time uh, at Southampton. Pretty successful guy, been at Monaco, uh, amongst other places. <clears throat> Excuse me. He says, I think it's difficult coming into a predefined strategy. Should our scouting and recruitment be driven more extensively with a wider reaching net? It definitely should. So, He's saying we had a player as the key core target, he says. That player, presumably, Mark Gehe, because he tried once, twice, three and four times, didn't get him. He said, we were still in dialogue with Palace all the way through, but Eddie, Eddie Howe, was clear, very clear. And it's not up to me after seven weeks to say, we'll do this and that because I'm in a supporting role. There were other targets. Could there have been more? I would say potentially. But Eddie was very clear that he had to feel comfortable that the person added value because we really have good players. That's why we ended up where we did. Why, why do you think Paul Mitchell's got to come out and say that? I don't know. And I don't think I don't know why he'd say, I think it's difficult coming into a predefined strategy. Because if it's difficult, don't come into it then. I'm assuming that you were recruited because you met the requirements of a predefined strategy. Otherwise, why would they recruit you mm. and ultimately once you're in that strategy you can start to finesse and to to look at the way that things can evolve as you're trying to evolve the football club so i think that's a bloody stupid thing to say and we also understand that most football clubs want predefined strategies you want to be able to have continuity you want to be able to have a situation where senior employments can can leave and the strategy of the football club doesn't change with the weather based upon the personality that's sitting in the dugout or sitting in a, an influential position. So I think that's a ridiculous thing to say in the first well, place. He says the previous strategy, is it fit for a purpose? Not last winter, gone. Uh, the winter before that. Is it fit for purpose in the modern game? Because other clubs that have adopted a different approach over time with more intelligence, more data informed than we are, actually prospered in this window. That's where we have to grow to be now. Well, you buy in expertise and you buy in excellence. So excellence doesn't He's mean... having a swipe at the Sta- Stavely regime, it seems. Well, I don't... <laughs> Look, I mean, it, it, he may well be. And he may well be distancing himself from any of his responsibilities of being in an influential role in a football club designed to give managers an opportunity to make decisions or facilitate solutions for managers, shall we say. That's his function. Not to, uh, not, not to, to be deferential to managers or to, to not have strong, strong influence over managers, because managers will go, these guys will stay. He's the sporting director. There is a reporting line. I don't know what reporting line is at, at Newcastle, but I don't know why Paul Mitchell is assuming the deferential role in this situation. I'm assuming that he'd be sitting there with Eddie Howe saying, what do you want? Okay, you want a centre-back. You've identified Gary. If we don't get him, what do you want after that? Mm. Well, I don't want anybody else in the entire world. I don't imagine that conversation happened. So I think ultimately... <laughs> They all look at themselves because there's questioning questions about what they have and haven't got. And there's pressure and expectation that was always going to be the case on this football club because, A, the 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 legacy of how much longer you can demonise Mike Ashley has worn off now. You're now into a new ground, a new territory. I don't mean football ground, but new uh, expectations on this football club. And I don't yeah. care how many Newcastle fans get outraged by the fact that I would suggest they have expectations and delusions of grandeur. Every football fan has delusions of grandeur. It's not unique to Newcastle. It just happens to be Newcastle that have got very wealthy owners. So they would expect to be seeing uh, a sea change based upon also the fact that Eddie made a rod for his own back. He, he overachieved. Um, and he's being judged by those standards now. And there's yeah. an expectation that Newcastle, because of their ownership model, are going to be punching at a high level. If you're really good at your job and you're really effective, which is the reason why you're recruited, you make effective changes very quickly, such as if you don't have a data network and you don't have enough intelligence, you build it and you build it quickly because that's why you're good at your job. 
That's what you do because an average person walking into an environment would do an average job. You're supposed to be in exceptional circumstances. Well, he's saying after seven weeks, it's not up to me to do this and that. He's in a supporting role. And that may well be fair. And that may well be fair. And I mean, on I top of all that, Eddie spoke about his role in it all and how he saw it. This was Eddie signing. You'd have to understand in the majority of the other windows, it's just been the whole structure of the club's been very different. So that's not necessarily a, a criticism of the structure we have now. It's just there's different personalities and it's, there's a different way of working now. So yes, it probably has been the most hands-off I've been, but that's not necessarily a negative. I mean, it's hard to work this out, Simon. I, I still can't get my head around why Newcastle didn't end up getting gay. Because because Palace weren't a willing seller. No, but they they were at a price, were they not? They were at a price. Well, I if think... you come back and back and back and back, you think eventually they'll wear them down and get them. They didn't get them. Well, I mean, that's a strategy that, that only ba is based upon an outcome. And if the outcome isn't delivered, then you're in a situation where you're going to be accountable for that thought process. If that's the only target you've got, and Palace aren't, you know, Palace are you know doing the hokey cokey. They got left foot in, left foot out. Feel like it. Maybe they don't feel like it. Maybe they do it for sixty five. Maybe they do it for seventy. And then they sell Wacky Man to them. And you look at it and go, hmm, they, are they really going to break up their centre-back partnership and effectively sell the, the entirety of their defensive unit in order to facilitate some cash and put themselves in jeopardy? Probably not. Yeah. So when I saw Anderson being sold, I would, I was, I would have been surprised if Palace sold Gary as well. They didn't seem to have any problems. Parrish talked about there was no issues with the players. The player made no noises about wanting to go out there in terms of I'm going to agitate. So... Newcastle left themselves as a hostage to fortune. Mm. And that means they're all in it. So they can all sit there and go, well, it ain't me, Gov. And I've been a bit more hands-off this time than I've been used to. And I've only been here seven weeks. Yeah. And, 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 and so on and so forth. But there was a task to achieve. And if there was a requirement to buy a centre-back and you were trying to take it out with a sniper effect, mm. then you better, be a, you better be a good shooter. And if you're not... Ah, interesting. Cutthroat. He cut deep on that one, didn't he? Um, I mean, obviously, you know, it, we've yes. debated on it. We, we've we've yelled. Not uh, saying anything we didn't know already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's that, that's fine. But you don't like him, so you're going to have an issue with listening to him. But no, you know, a lot of what we, we, a lot we, of what we, Simon we, a lot of what Simon Jordan sense. says is, is common sense, but a lot of it's bullshit. What he yeah. said there was right. He said, and, and according to Mitchell, and he said, I don't and I don't want anybody. I can't remember the exact wording, but effectively, what Eddie was saying. If I can't have gay, I don't want anybody else who won't take us forward as much as I believe gay will. Mm -hmm. and, like, uh, and like I've said on numerous times now, since Cher got suspended, if we'd went out and spent, say, 40 million quid on Emil Kraft, and nobody had ever heard of Emil Kraft before, let's assume he's, he's, he's somebody that... Uh, Paul Mitchell's plucked from some league that we didn't know and we'd never seen him play, etc., etc., etc. And he'd come in and do, done the job that Emil Kraft has done. We'd all be raving about him, saying what a fantastic centre half he'd found for. But because he's one of our own and we had him already, it goes under the radar. And oh, he's a makeshift until Cher comes back. Well, I mean, he is. Though. He's, he's not the long term solution. He's not the long term, exactly. I mean, you, you well, can't... I agree. He's not the long term solution. But you can't agree and disagree at the same time. You, you, yeah, you know, you're, you're trying to do what I want. Yeah. No, you're fighting both. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. You just make no sense. So you know, I mean, you're well, with in your opinion, exactly. Exactly. You're arguing with yourself. It's it's, it's, it's simple, man. You can't say, uh, you know, that we we, we did all this great uh, recruiting, we got craft, and then saying that he's not going to be part of the future. Well, what do you, what do you, I mean, it, it makes... Right, we had a shitty window, but we didn't have a shitty window because we didn't get gay. We had a shitty window because we, we didn't, didn't buy anybody. a right winger. So if we would have gotten nice. Chaloba, you would have been happy. It would have been no, a good No, I wouldn't window. have been happy. So what are you talking about? Oh, I'm sorry. So if you would if you would have gotten, right. for example, I don't I'm know right. what's, a, what's a right winger. If we'd only got gay, right. I still wouldn't have been happy. What if we'd got Bowen? I'd have oh, been Bob very Bob. happy. Okay. Yeah. There you go. All right. If, um, we, if we'd got him, Wemo, I would have been very happy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Cristiano Ronaldo? <laughs> oh, CR7. Would have made a few bobs. CR7. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. CR7. You know, I'm tell you something. CR7, you know how much money in PSR we would have gotten next yeah, year? That's the thing. Yeah. Ooh, hoo, hoo. Would it not be...